Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mezone African Motives. Uh, still working on our mathematics and five uh, that is working on our revisions. We shall be focusing on our limits and uh, continuity part, which is uh, from the question paper of our April uh, 2023 exams. Okay, so the first part here, we shall just quickly rush through and see what you're given. We are given to determine uh, the following limit in this case. So we have got a limit of y that is approximated uh, for the values of uh, x in this case, approximating to three. So if we are to check here, what we're supposed to actually have in this case was to substitute a three here. We substitute a three here. But by doing this, you are going to obtain three minus two, which is going to give us one. And we know that the lean of one is a zero. We are going to obtain one over zero in this case, minus in this case, three minus three was going to give us a zero, which is, we know that one over zero approximates to infinity. So we've got infinity minus infinity like this. So this condition is difficult for us to work with when it is like this. So what we are going to do is to try by all means to have this as a fraction so that we can check for the condition of uh, infinity over the infinity or the zero over zero concept. All right, so that we can apply our L hospitals rule. So we are going to have this first as a fraction. That is y is equal to uh, the limit in this case of uh, x approaching to uh, three. So we can just have this as a single fraction with by we put uh, the lean of x minus two and uh, we've got x minus three in the, in the denominator in this case. So we're going to take this together uh, as our LCM. So I'm going to take uh, x minus three and uh, the lean of uh, x uh, minus two like this. So this is a single part affected by lean, all right? So if we divide the lean x minus two and the lean x minus two, this part will cancel, you remain with x minus three times one, which is going to be one times uh, x uh, minus three, which is just x minus three in that case, all right? We do the same thing. We divide the x minus three and x minus three. This was going to cancel, you remain with the lean of x minus two, but multiplied to negative one. So it was going to be negative one times the lean of uh, x uh, minus two in this case like this, all right, which we can just uh, try to simplify uh, from this part here, whereby y is equal to the lean, uh, to the limit of x, which is approaching two to three in this case. All right, so you can simplify one times x, which was going to be x, times negative three, that's negative three. Negative one times lean is going to give us negative, uh, the lean of x uh, minus two like this. Everything over our denominator, which is uh, x minus three into the lean of uh, x minus two like this. All right, so this is what you're going to have uh, at the end. Now we try to apply our, the concept of the limits that we are given uh, as x is approaching two to three in this case. So we're going to substitute where there's an x, we're going to substitute a three, where there's x, we're going to substitute a three. By just looking here, we are going to have three minus three, which is a zero. This one is three minus one, which is lean one. And we know that lean one is a zero. So there we are going to obtain zero over. This one, three minus three, that's a zero. The moment we multiply anything by zero, that's going to give us a zero in this case. So meaning to say, you are supposed to apply the L hospital school in this case. All right. What is the concept now? We are supposed to find the derivative that is in this case from our numerator, in this case, from this top part, we are supposed to find the derivative. We do the same thing. We find the derivative of this part. So let us find our derivative and see how it was going to be like. All right, so actually if you check your memo, it was actually uh, a wrong presentation that was given there. You're supposed to find the derivative of each properly in this case, which is y is equal to, uh, let's work with x, we've got x, which is going to give us a one. So we're going to have the limit here as x is approaching to three. So we are going to have the derivative of x, which is a one, all right? The derivative of minus three, that's a zero in this case. So we are left with this part of minus lean uh, x minus what? x minus two. So we are supposed to find the derivative of a lean in this case. How do you differentiate a lean? Remember the derivative of a lean uh, f of x is simply the derivative of uh, f of x over 
our f of x in this case. That is the derivative of this f of x, which is x minus what? x minus two, that is going to be minus. The derivative of x is one. The derivative of two or minus two, that's a zero in this case. So this is the derivative of our f of x over the f of x, which is the, the function that we are given x minus two. So it's going to be one over x minus two like this. We have found the derivative of our lean. All right, we move on to our denominator in this case, all right? So this is going to represent our denominator in this case, whereby again, we are supposed to find the derivative of what is in the denominator. But if we check uh, on our denominator here, what is it that we are having? We're having a product. This is a function of X, this is a function of X. We've got U in this case, and we've got uh, V in this case. So remember from our product rule, we are going to use uh, U, the derivative of V plus, uh, the, the, if you are going to start with the V in this case, the derivative of U, or you can start with the derivative of U followed by V, it's one and the same thing, all right? So in this case, having our U, which is X minus three, so we are going to just take our X minus three as it is, all right? Times the first derivative of V, which is the derivative of lean. Remember, we talked about the derivative of lean before, we got one over x minus two. So it was going to be one over x uh, minus two like this, all right. Plus in this case, our v, our v, which is uh, lean x uh, minus uh, two in this case times the derivative of u, which is x minus three. If we differentiate this, we are going to obtain a one. So this is what we have. So on this part, let us try to substitute and see uh, from our limit when x is approximated to, uh, to three in this case, we are supposed to check and see if we are still obtaining a zero over zero. If it is like that, therefore we are supposed to differentiate again. That, that is, what it, that is uh, what it means actually. We are supposed to find uh, the derivative of this part again. All right, so let us do this and uh, see what's going to happen here. If we substitute a three, this is going to be a three here. Three minus two, which is a one. So we're going to have one minus one, uh, which is a zero in this case, all right? We substitute a three here. The moment we substitute a three here, that's a zero. So zero times anything is going to be a zero here. We substitute a three, lean of one is a zero, like I said, so zero plus zero is going to give us a zero or just use your calculator at once. So meaning to say we are obtaining zero over zero, we are supposed to apply again our L hospitals so where we are supposed to find the derivative of the numerator and also the derivative of what is in the denominator in this case. All right, so meaning to say, we are going to have this as, uh, let us just try to simplify, we can uh, just differentiate or you can combine your fractions in this case to be a single uh, to be a single fraction, right? Or uh, where there is x minus three in this case and uh, x minus two, all right? These are the values x minus three, all right? I just wanna check again here. All right, that's x minus three there. So meaning to say, we are going to have this combined together, all right? Let us save our derivative here first on the numerator first. So on the numerator part, we are going to find the derivative of uh, one, which is a zero in this case, we're going to have zero minus, we are supposed to find the derivative of one over X uh, minus three. So how do we, uh, X minus two, how do we differentiate this? One over X minus two is same as uh, X minus two to the exponent of negative one. So we are going to apply the chain rule whereby you drop the exponent in this case to find the derivative of the bracket, which is going to be minus X minus two. We subtract one, which is going to be negative two times the derivative of what is inside of our bracket in this case, which is one. So meaning to say, we are going to obtain a negative this multiplied by one, which is just uh, remains like that. So that's a negative here from our derivative, but already there's a negative there. So we are going to obtain a positive. So this is zero plus uh, X minus two to the exponent of uh, minus two. That is what you're going to have in this case. All right, then we move on to this part of uh, X minus three times X. We're supposed to find the derivative here again. So this is same as over one. So we're going to multiply X minus one times three, which is going to give us X, uh, X minus three times one, which is X minus three over 
one times x minus two, which is x minus two like this. So as we can see, in order for us to differentiate this, we are now referring, it's a fraction. So we can actually apply uh, the quotient rule in this case. So having this from our quotient rule, where we are saying this is representing, this part is our u and this is our v. So from our quotient rule, we know that the derivative in this case is supposed to be uh, v, the derivative of u minus uh, u, the derivative of v in this case, or you can start with the derivative of v, which is one and the same thing over v squared in this case. So meaning to say we are going to take our v, which is x minus two in this case. So this was going to be x minus two times the derivative of u, which is here we are going to obtain a one minus u, we take the u as it is, which is x minus three times the derivative of v, which was going to be a one everything over v squared, which is uh, x uh, minus two squared. Expand your brackets by one, we are going to obtain x minus two by negative one, it's negative one times x, which is negative x, negative one times three times negative three, which is a positive three, everything over x uh, minus two squared. So the x and the x was going to cancel, uh, minus two and uh, three was going to give us one over x minus two squared. So this is the expression, or this is the answer that you're going to obtain from our integral part, which is one over x minus two squared, or you can write this as x minus two to the exponent of minus two. It's one and the same thing, all right? So we're going to have this as x minus two. So we're going to have everything over, we differentiated, remember we are differentiating every part. So we differentiated this part here, this part, which gave us what? x minus three over x plus two. So we ended up with the x minus two to the exponent of minus two or one over, it's one and the same thing. All right, we go to the lean in this case. This one is a direct, we talked about the lean. So we are going to have, remember, the derivative of f of x, which is one over our f of x, which is x minus two. We talked about this before. So this is what we're going to have at the end. We try again our limits. Okay, so we're going to try again our limits and see. Uh, we try the limit, we are limited to x being three. So this was going to be a three. Three minus two was going to be one to the x, which was going to be a one. Here we put a three, so this was going to give us a one. We put a three, this was going to give us a one. So meaning to say this time, we are not going to obtain a zero. We are going to obtain exact value on top. You're going to get a one. On this part, you're going to get a one plus on this part, you're going to obtain a one. So that was going to be at the end, y is going to be one over one plus one, which is a two. So that is uh, how we're supposed to apply our limits in this case. So as you can see, the application of limits, it's based on your derivatives, revise your derivatives, the basics uh, of your derivatives, how to differentiate, uh, the product, the quotient, and so forth. Uh, even though the marks there, they might not like uh, correspond to say the calculation that you're doing, they expect you to be knowing these basics uh, derivatives. That's why you see we are just given four marks for that. All right, let us check the other part, which is the item two, 1.2. We are now asked to determine the values of X. That was our question. Uh, the values, uh, it's actually, it can be value of values of X for which, f of x is discontinuous. Remember, if a function is discontinuous, it means the denominator in this case must be equal to zero. f of x over zero, it means it approximates to infinity, that thing a uh, discontinuous in this case. So what you simply needed in this case was to, to say, the denominator when it is equal to zero, this is our denominator here. So we are simply going to take that as our equation to say uh, x is squared, minus three X uh, plus two is equal to zero. That's a function to be discontinuous. All right, so from there we can solve our equation. Uh, depending with it, uh, can we use quadratic formula or factorization? So here we've got, uh, let's try for, if we've got factors in this case, we've got factors of uh, two, in this case, which can give us a negative three. We have factors of two that will give us a negative three uh, factors. Uh, we need factors of uh, positive two, but these factors of positive two should give us a negative three. So that's negative two and negative one. So meaning to say we are going to have two brackets here equal to zero. Since 
the coefficient of x squared is one, we're going to have x and x here. We take those factors as they are, which is minus two and minus one. So each bracket must be equal to zero. So therefore, x is equal to two, or from this bracket, x is going to be equivalent to positive one in this case. All right, so these are the possible values of x that if we substitute them here, we are going to obtain a zero. And if we obtain a zero, it means this function is discontinuous. That is, uh, it is approximating infinity at the end. So that is how you play around with the, the continuity part, uh, the limits and so forth. So all you need is to just work as much questions as we are preparing for our exams. As we can see, uh, these are the typical questions. We have talked about this on the introduction of uh, limits and continuity. Make sure that you watch the video so that you revise the basics of our limits and continuity from there.